Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planels, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I'm currently at 231 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help me out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platform. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Hernando Planels, who resides in Sacramento, California. He's a basketball coach and motivational speaker who has his own podcast called Be Contagious, where he spreads inspiration and positivity. We also share the same last name, so I personally reached out and then wanted him to come on and share the love. Enjoy the episode. Welcome back to the Hot Sauce. Today we have a special episode. This is a this is a different type of episode because as you can see, our guest here has a similar last name to mine. And I found him through LinkedIn. And I've been watching his journey along the way, and I decided to have him on the podcast so we can hear about a Hernando Planel. So what we're going to do is we're going to put him in the hot seat here, and we are going to allow him to go and tell her, tell us about his journey and what he's doing. So Hernando, the floor is yours. Go talk about it. Well, I'm first of all, I appreciate coming on. I think like we mentioned earlier, it's great talking to someone with the same last name because everywhere I go, you know, I've been called Planus. Planeus. Um, they spell my name wrong all the time. Probably the same too. It's always like two N's. I'm like, it's one N, it's two L's and everything two else. L's. But <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped to be here. So it's, uh, you know, really, I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, I've been a basketball coach for 20, 25 years now. I can't believe I, I'm old enough to say that. That's the craziest part with anything else. But grew up in LA. Um, I'm actually one of 10 kids. Um, my uh, my mom is from the Philippines. My my father is from uh, Colombia, with parents from Spain. I still don't know exactly where he's from, so I just say all of that. Um, but I, I've been coaching basketball for 25 years, working with student athletes the whole time. Um, work, coach high school, college, professional, coach in four different countries. Uh, was a coach at Duke University, University of Illinois. I was with the Boston Celtics and their NBA G League team for a little bit. Um, so I, I had that coaching part of it. And then also I do sports choreography on film and TV. So if you've seen movies like Coach Carter, The Longest Yard, there's a show on Apple TV called Swagger right now. I train the actors, uh, put the choreography together to make to make it look real. Um, and that's kind of what I've been doing for, how, am I, how old am I? I'm 46. Uh, that's what I've been doing now for, for about 20, 25 years. I have two kids, two grown kids. Uh, my son's a swimmer at Utah. He's 23 years old. My daughter is 19. She's at Chico State in theater. Um, so, you know, now that they're older, I just do a lot of different things. I also now work with organizations on their leadership structure and connection, really trying to figure out, trying to help others realize their potential, to realize that they've been given gifts that they just haven't used yet because we just play it safe over and over again through life. So, I think I covered everything. <laughs> it's a lot of everything. <laughs> sweet, sweet. No, that was that was great. Uh, I, I I would say that uh, I'm kind of similar in that uh, I did. You know, I, I wanted to coach. I've coached soccer, youth soccer for. I, I guess I I gave it up uh, about three years ago when I was going through divorce. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make sure I spent more time with my kids. So. Um, so we gave up, you know, we gave up coaching, but I coached right. uh, in uh, club soccer, high school soccer, Olympic development program, was a grad assistant uh, at uh, Columbia University women's team for a little Ooh, while. Nice. And then, and then uh, youth soccer was nice and it a lot, especially as the kids were growing up, but then you know how it gets uh, travel, travel sports can get a little busy with schedules and everything. So, right. right. Um, but I, I, it was, it was great. I, I still have some players that I've coached that are still playing at the professional level. So it's exciting to see. So I'm sure yeah. you feel the same way when you see somebody Absolutely. move on. It's great. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. I love seeing their well, successes and what they're doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. So can you tell me what exactly inspired you to get into the inspiration business? Because I feel the same way. It's like I, I see people have been blessed with a lot of gifts and sometimes um, mentally, uh, as you as you mentioned, they might play it safe, but they don't really harness their full capabilities. So what, what got you inspired into this? Well, I think it's just an overall belief of 
my own personal power that I've had to learn over the years, right? So, you know, growing up was told you could be anything you want. And, and that's great when you're younger. And then you go through life and you're like, that's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, right? With the fears that set in, and usually the fear is set in from how we were raised, what we, how we were brought up on, right? I mean, the biggest story I always tell all the time is that, you know, even when we're little, not even when we're little, when we're little, you know, our parents are telling us, no, 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 like, no, don't put your head in the oven. No, don't put your finger in the socket, right? No, don't do this because you're going to fall. So we are programmed with the word no. And if you notice that when anybody tells you no, usually some sort of, I'm not going to call trauma, but a little anger comes up because like, who the hell are you telling me no, right? And that all stems from the beginning. So if that starts from the beginning, then how many of us aren't really pushing forward in our life? Not to say you have to, because if you feel like you're in a great place, that's amazing, right? But the majority of us spend our lives saying, I want my purpose. I want to find my purpose. What am I supposed to do? And we find that purpose through our journey. We find the per, uh, our purpose by stepping through gates, doors, whatever you want to call it, to truly find ourselves. Now, in the process, we end up finding this purpose that was probably totally different than we thought our purpose was going to be. But then we start living a more fulfilled life. And as there's more electronics, as there's more comparison because of social media, if I can't believe this person did this and this person did not and then all of a sudden our self-esteem lowers, we need to figure out how to bring ourselves up. And so then what happens is that it, you see when more people like take pictures of just themselves, then you hear all the judges come out saying, oh, you know, they're missing something in their life. No, they're growing. Like we're growing just like we did when we were little and we're still gonna grow today. So I, I like to help organizations, I like to help people move forward in their life because I've had to go through so many things. I, I got divorced 10 years ago. I had to figure out how to be a parent being 3000 miles away because they, we lived in two different places. I had to figure out like that I wanted to actually coach at a high level. I just coach at a high level just in a different way. So I wanted to help people get in that direction because I realized that by me helping others and by me following the advice that I would give to others, I myself will grow because of that. I'm constantly reminding myself that I need to grow and I need to get to wherever I need to be because I'm able to talk to others and help them along their way. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. I, I'm sure you find it uh, very fulfilling to see people uh, maximize their potential, you know, as, as you speak with them, because I, I feel the same way. I'm like, uh, someone told me I could sell ice to Eskimos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you I don't know. We would sell a lot of ice. We would sell a lot of ice. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it's good. It's good. So, um, so yeah, tell us like in your, let's, let's look at your basketball career for a second and the, and the yeah. places you've coached, what have been some of the trials and tribulations of being a collegiate and professional basketball coach that you've noticed throughout the years? Well, I, I think it's just the people skills part, right? People, we are all changing all the time yet. In the coaching industry, people want to coach the same way they've been coached, the same way they've been led over the years. We update our iPhone or whatever phone you have all the time, but we don't update ourselves. We don't update how we coach. We don't update how we talk to people. So, you know, in my 20s, I was a yeller and a screamer, and then 30s and 40s, and now I'm much more calm. You know, you, you have to treat people with respect. And at that time, 20 years ago, I didn't even know what that meant. I believed they should be respecting me because I was sitting in this head coaching chair when the reality, it's the other way, right? So those were some of the challenges that have gone on, you know, coaching high school, coaching at, um, you know, in college. And then all the other part too is like when you're coaching at different schools, different. When you're coaching, I coach at a junior college, those players are different than the players at a Duke University. They still wanted to play. They still want to get coached, but they come from different backgrounds and you have to be attuned to it. You have to be aware of where your players come from so that you could build those relationships with. It's much more relational than ever before. And then when I coach in countries where English was not even spoken, I coach in Japan. 
right? So now I have a translator. So now I have to learn how to communicate, how to connect through a translator to my player. And when you do that, you start learning different skills. You start showing, you know, learning that how your body language, you know, how you stand, even you smiling a little sends so many different messages and you don't want mixed messages. You want direct messages. So over time, you start learning that communication is key, even though people say it all the time. But we also start learning that if you're curious on how the other person takes in the information, then you're more inclined to be a much better educator, communicator, and relationship builder. Awesome. No, that's great. I um, I had to do a, a, a job in Saudi Arabia once, and it was very oh. fascinating because... Ah. Well, because the, um, you know, in, in America, we're using our hands. Everyone sees everything. Right. And the women over there, you can only see this, right? So right. you're trying to gather all this information from here. And I'm sure being in Japan or being in the Philippines or, or you don't want to disrespect people. You want to make sure you're, totally. you know, culturally attuned to what's going on and everything. So definitely good to right. hear. Well, um, also, you know, when I work with organizations, I do a lot of improv games. And we do a lot of body language and noticing how the other person speaks. So, and we do this where if I talk a lot with my hands, which you and I both do, right? Sometimes the person you're talking to starts looking at your hands because they're yes. like, yeah. they're, they're trying to like, should I look at his eyes? Should I look at his hands? I don't, I don't know what I should be looking at. So then you got to start like calming your hands. Down. I'm like, oh, I better calm down. So it's like that noticing part in the middle of the conversation and and that's another part that's another layer of thinking how the other person takes in information right right absolutely um <clears throat> well in all your in all your journeys i guess uh what would you say has been the uh the most demanding coaching wise would you say it's in the junior college the division one like duke or was it the professional basketball what what do you think what do you think was the most challenging for you well i think when coaching junior college your players need more service meaning like a car ride a burger you know like those type of things when you get to duke they're more self-sufficient um a little more whiny just because they're so used to different things in life and then in the professional ranks, it's really about building those those relationships because they already have everything. I think, and I really live this every, every day, it's the challenge I have is what is today. And it may be different than yesterday and it's going to be different tomorrow. But today is the greatest challenge and the greatest day. So it's hard for me to say this was tougher than others because, right, like, when I start balancing everything out, junior college, there is this level of of, of, of a different level of, of maybe toughness or raising. And then Duke was another level. But when I have to divvy up the time, it, it all evens out, right? Coaching is coaching. People are people. And if you find the right mechanism to touch their hearts, their mind, their and their soul, then all of a sudden, yes, it's challenging, but now there's a certain level of joy because you yourself have have um, come up with it. I, but I will say probably the biggest challenge, I used to coach the New Zealand national team. And when I was coaching New Zealand national team, I was in North Carolina. And New Zealand obviously is like almost 8,000 miles away. So the biggest challenge there was communicating with a team that was 8,000 miles away, obviously in a different time zone. So I'm doing, you know, coaching meetings at 2 a.m., when it's whatever time it was, I don't remember like 5 p.m. their time or anything else. That part was was the toughest. But and I'm not minimizing or simplifying that communication is easy because it's 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 not depending on where it is. It really is, though, how you know, it's the lens that, that you look at it. If if every day I say this is really, really hard, then guess what? It's going to be really, really hard because you're saying it to yourself. You're believing it to yourself instead of saying I understand it's hard, but guess what? What part of life isn't? What part of life isn't changing? And if I truly want to get to where I want to go, be, then 
I have to embrace that struggle, embrace what's right in front of me, and then and then push through with it. And I have to say, again, I make everything sound so simple in life. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it is a hard thing yeah. every day. But if you're in the moment, if you keep looking forward and knowing what's right now, you know what? You have a better chance to to do a really good job. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Every day is a blessing, you know. So. It is. 100%. All right. So um, if you could do it all over again in your career, you know, what would you change and what would you keep the same? And I always ask this question and it's always interesting to see people's responses. I guess, uh, you know, some people don't want to change anything. Some people would change a lot. Or I think for most of the guests that I've had, you're like the, I think the 21st or 22nd person yes. I've interviewed so far that, you know, everyone usually is like, you know, the journey is unique and this is what it makes me. And I love your Ted Lasso mug, you know? So, so yeah. So what would you say? Honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. And the reason why I wouldn't change a thing is because what I thought my journey was going to look like is totally different. But as a man of faith, as a man who believes in the beauty of life, if I'm planning everything and everything goes the way I want it to be, then how am I truly enjoying life? Right? Like I've got to enjoy this journey. Yes. The, the journey is a beautiful thing. The hardest part for any of us is to enjoy the journey when you're in the journey, right? Now it's always hindsight. And I was like, Oh, when you're in the moment, you're in the storm. You're like, Oh, I hate the storm. You're out of the storm. You're like, Oh, I love being in the storm. The storm was so good for me. But if you bridge the gap and be like, boy, this really sucks right now. I don't like this feeling. I don't like what's happening. Okay. If you give that honor and respect, then you get to truly learn and take in. What am I learning here? Like, what are the things that are happening? Perfect example. Um, I got, like I mentioned, I got divorced 10 years ago. Uh, my ex-wife ended up leaving the state without letting me know. I had to go through court and all these things. I have a choice to be truly, truly upset and angry, or, and then, and then the kids get in the middle, or I can sit there and be like, what am I learning from this? This sucks. What am I going to do about it? Right? Um, I paid talent, child support and alimony, $3,400 a month. Did that for eight years. I have a lot of friends who are divorced and they are so upset when they have to pay that. And they look at me like, Hernando, why aren't you upset? Well, number one, I call that it was the price of admission for me to, for us to move on. Number one. Number two is if I'm angry every single month, am I really growing? Am I really taking the steps that I'm sharing with others? No. Here it is. You take care of the kids. I come I do everything I can to be with them. That's the first part. The second part is, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for these opportunities. You know why? Because now I learned how to budget my money. Now I learned how to actually communicate with my kids, call them, FaceTime, visit them. What were more better times or efficient times I could spend with them? How can I grow relationships with them? And for me, for me at the time, it was the worst experience I can go through, but I learned from it. And the reality is this, as much as my ex-wife and I got a divorce. I'm also very thankful for her because she helped me shape who I am today. I could either be really upset, angry, and just mean, or I could say I learned from this, right? So I tell that story to say, I wouldn't change anything in my journey because it's made me today. And I know that tomorrow I'll be better. The next day after that, I couldn't be, I mean, my kids, I have the best relationship with my kids. And it wouldn't have happened if I didn't go through that. And it wouldn't have happened if in the moment then I would be so angry that I wouldn't be able to spend time with them. So I love my life. I tell you, I love my life. There are low moments. There are high moments. But they're moments that I'll have for the rest of my life. That is uh, definitely a, a true. <clears throat> that's, that's the way I feel about life, you know. I went through divorce a few years ago and I think, uh, yeah, some people might be bitter. I'm just like, you know, we, we've had a lot of good experiences throughout and uh, your children wouldn't be here. 
without their That's mother. That's right. So it's kind of a it's a it's a beautiful thing, and um, you know, people grow apart, whatever, however way people want to go through divorce. But I think uh, being being graceful and and being thankful for the opportunities that you had is the best way to take it. Because otherwise, the alternative is people get angry, mad, they end up stressing themselves out, they might get sick, and that's right. It's not worth it. Like you know, there's there's always. Uh, you know, something, yeah. something out there that people can look for. So, so appreciate well, your story. And and also the kids feel like they're in the middle of it. Right. And, and yes. I, I don't, I really don't believe that we see the kids learn their own way, but there's, there's still kids in many ways. So for a while, my kids were always like, you know, they're, it's like, they're on the balance beam and my my mom's side on my dad's side oh my gosh and now we've gotten to the point because i'm always like no you know tell your mom to show up like it's okay like at the end of the day no matter what we're always family because we're tied to the kids so and if we truly are in the business of breaking our generational curses and making our kids better then why won't we do the things that are hard do the things that are uncomfortable so that everyone can get together. Now, all of us are in a group chat. My kids feel so free to text different uh, great things happening in their life or low points in this group chat with all four of us because of that. And it's taken many years, but those are the moments that you know, you're like, wow, hey, my kids have a great chance to be a lot better than their dad and their mom. That's really important to me. Yeah, well, that I mean, that's the the whole generational cycles. We we pass trauma yeah. down to the next generation, so that's we got to right. break it eventually. You got to put your that's foot right. down and be like, enough. <laughs> so not today. No, that's that's exactly. what you got to do. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, so you know, with everything that you've been doing, what do you think the future holds for you? Um, I know you do. I, I know you mentioned being involved in movies. I don't know mm -hmm. if you're still going to be coaching or doing podcasts, doing talks. Like, what what do you think the future holds for you? I mean, a little bit of everything. I, I think I've kind of realized that I just love doing a lot of different things. And, um, you know, you mentioned I, I do have a podcast, uh, uh, you know, talk about leadership. And we're going to get you on, of course, Andrew. I got to get you on the, on the calendar. But, you know, I, I, I really love the fact that everything that I'm blessed to do has to do with leading, communicating, and connecting. Um, really, what I want to do, I want to spend as much time with my kids as I can before they have their own families, right? So I even turned down a coaching job, a great coaching job uh, a year ago because I want to spend more time with my kids. And now this was the year I saw every single one of my son's swim meets. I spent so much time with my daughter, spent time with family and loved ones. That, of course, what I'd love to, that's what everybody would love to do. Um, but doing all these different things. So, I, you know, doing sp different, different speaking events. I was just in San Francisco a few days ago. I've got a few more coming up. Doing the podcast, doing TV shows or commercials whenever they, they pop up. And I do take a certain, I take up to five clients on, on life coaching and mental training. So all those things, I'd like to, to continue with that. If a great coaching job comes by, I have no problem jumping into that as well, too. I do believe life is fluid. Um, and if life is fluid, then I myself have to be fluid. Now, that doesn't mean not like I'm just in the wind. You have some stable parts in your life and you build those things. And then you understand what you have to, to spend, right? Your monthly outgo and everything else. One of the big things I did twice now I've done this in my life is that I've sold everything. I, I always joke around. They say, where do you live? I said, wherever my car is parked. Right. So I don't live on my car, but it's I'm around ever. So I, I, I downsized everything so that I could live in a way where I can see everybody um, and do the things that I have. So, you know, my kids, they're so funny. They're always like, Dad, you live your life like you're a millionaire. I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm not. I know what I have in the bank account. But what I've done is I've learned to, to maximize what I have, but then at the same time, spend the time doing the things that 
I love and I'm passionate about. And again, I don't know how long this can go for. It could go for like three years. I'm like, oh shoot, I better get back into coaching. Or it could go a lot, a long, a long way. And that's that's for me is the uh, the challenge, the excitement, um, and everything that I look forward to every time I wake up. <laughs> I think my kids feel the same way about me. They're like, oh, you gotta yeah. be rich. I'm like, no. <laughs> I, just, is, I got a I got a smile on my face every day. Yeah, I'm trying to. I like I say, I'm living a dream every single day. Doesn't matter what we're doing, living the dream, baby, living the dream. That's what it is. I, I do. So. I've actually started to send my kids what I do. Like so, if I put, you know, brochures together, or I put marketing materials for the stuff I'm doing, or I do like different things. I constantly send them because I'm like, I'm showing them that their dad is just hanging looks like he's hanging out all the time I'm like no no this is all the work i'm doing so they 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 see it as well too but yeah isn't it crazy there they um i said you gotta live your life guys you gotta live your life yeah yeah uh, i think everybody's like oh how do you put all this stuff out how do you do this how do you do that it's like well lack of sleep all right yeah stay up late wake up early right. you gotta do what you need to do to make it happen you know yeah. i learned like i said the podcasting making videos i'm self-taught and yep, you, you get and better both. and better as you go. That's you right. Know, next thing you know, it's like people are like, oh, this is great. I'm like, hey, watching, consuming, and making. That's what you got to do. Just get and out there and make right. it happen. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So cool. So I could sit here and chat with you all day. But the final question for you is, what, yeah. any words of wisdom for the next generation of folks? And I, and I think, um, you know, my podcast is traditionally aimed towards dietitians. But as I mentioned, I'm opening up to everybody because we can all learn from each other. Any words of wisdom for the next generation of people coming into the workforce any with any passion they have? Yeah, you know, li live your life without any self-judgment, knowing that everybody will have an opinion on what you do or don't do, right? So, and, and us as parents don't realize that we um, inadvertently shape our kids in, in ways that hold them back. And so even when we ask our kids, hey, so what are you going to do after college? Or, hey, what's next? They feel pressure. They're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And then the reality is, when I look at myself, when I was 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, I didn't know what I was going to do. My son is 23. I had Preston, which is my son's name, when I was 22. So it's a totally different experience, right? So for any of you who is on starting their journey or in their journey or on the end of their journey, it's never too late to take a sit back and say, all right, what, what do I wanna do? And then how am I gonna build this out? And then how am I gonna have the courage to take that leap? Now, some of you, should not take the leap. Some of you should, right? But live life with no regrets and no judgment. And and when you do that, when you give yourself love, you give yourself forgiveness, you give yourself grace, and not in uh, a naive way. You do it in a way where like, yeah, I, I could have been better. I that that one should have I should have adjusted this. But what did I learn from it, right? So keep learning, growing knowing that everyone is going to is going to think you're crazy even to this day my mom i we talk, filipino lady so most filipinos as we all know are nurses i'm 47 years old 46 my mom still asked me when i'm going to go to nursing school not going to nursing school mom not going not going because in her mind that that's her judgy way but be fluid move forward take roads that people are less traveled give yourself a chance to truly be where where you want to be but you got to be the only person who could take um take ownership and to take a look can i really do it or can i not really do it absolutely well thank you i i appreciate that uh, that's that's awesome words i always uh, kind of laugh because i think it's the uh, yeah some people may think that your career path has been nuts or any career path has been nuts because they're like, oh, how do you do what you do? And it's like, hey, uh, if you've got the uh, intestinal fortitude to stick it out and, and go through the different hoops that you got to jump through and, and 
still have a passion for it. Um, more power to you. And especially, I'm like yeah. you, I like diversity. I like to do a lot of different yes. things. Got to, got to have hands in different pots. And um, do you, do you? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you know about Joe Coy, right? You know, oh, Joe yeah. Coy, oh, I, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, so you love this. So I also have a food Instagram okay. and TikTok okay. called, it's called Leftovers and Hangovers. Okay. So on that one, I'll do either a food review or, or whatever else it is. So I was down in Glendale, California. They have a great uh, Filipino restaurant. I got it and I go in my car and I eat it, right? So I got I had Filipino chicharron, which is pig skin. And pig skin, I'm yeah. there and on the comments, it's, oh my gosh, I thought it was Joe Coy. Oh, it's Joe Coy's brother. Oh, it's Joe Coy this and this. And I'm like, number one, Joe Coy, I love you but I'm slightly better looking than you. Number two, <laughs> I don't have as much money as he does. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I get that all the time. It's so insane. But yes, yes, I do. Absolutely yeah. no joke. Oh, that's good. And then, no, I think the the stereotype about, you know, Filipinos becoming nurses, because I can yeah. see it. It's like, you're going to be a nurse. You're going to be a nurse. And then you're like, I'm not going to be a nurse. And I think it's, I think uh, sometimes the parents might try to uh, push people in a certain ways but yeah no. so my daughter i thought is in the in musical theater she is was recruited to be in some dance team or whatever and she met like two other filipinos like oh you're filipino and they ask her like what's your major so my daughter gabby says i'm musical theater and gabby says what's yours so they said oh it's nursing the next question they ask gabby they're like your parents let you choose what to be in yeah. life I was like, this is crazy. This is 2023. I get it. But I'm like, yes. Now, honestly, do I know what my daughter can do in musical theater? No. But I'm celebrating the heck out of it because that's what she wants to do and go for it. Right. I think that's the same way I'm treating my children. There's no pressure. Yeah. They're nope. going to be on their own journey. I think the, the job of a parent is to help them be the best version of themselves and they'll find their career path wherever it is. And I think the main thing is much like sports or any activity, you got to stick it out, got to commit to it, dedicate yourself to the craft. And then yep. we all learn skills for along the way. So, well, with that being said, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on. I'm a Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. It's me. Your greatest gift if you are watching this on YouTube is to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this content. If you are listening on a podcast platform, please share away. And of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to buy me a coffee and share a beverage my way. And if you want to purchase one for the guests that I just interviewed, send it my way and I will get it to that individual. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.